What's up, guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now, we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center and store again today. And we're going to talk about, is a boa a good snake pet? Just before we get into that, right in this bottom corner right there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that, and we appreciate you doing so. Following along week after week after week. Now, let's get right into this. All right, so I had a subscriber write in and ask, if we would do a video on, is a boa a good snake pet? Well... Anybody that knows me knows the answer to that is going to be absolutely. There are some things to talk about when we talk about a boa being a good snake pet. So a good snake pet, I guess, is a relative term. If it ain't trying to kill you, it's probably a good snake pet. But that's beside the point. Most people know corn snakes and ball pythons as primarily the go-to for your starting snake pets. And yes, in theory, sometimes that probably is a little bit better starting point than a boa. Unless you start off with a baby boa and you're prepared for what we would classify as the size that it's going to get to or could potentially get to. But what makes a boa a good snake pet? Well, one of the things is they're rewarding to work with. Absolutely, absolutely rewarding to work with. They're not quite as boring and as dull as ball pythons can be. And ball pythons are an absolutely great starting snake pet. Absolutely. That's a fact. But they're known as pet rocks in our industry. We just call them pet rocks or pet paperweights. Because for one, they're not turtle, so they hide a lot. Whereas your boas are more of a diurnal species and they will hide, but they do like to be out exploring and you will see them a little bit more than what you would a ball python. So another thing that makes a boa a great snake pet is if you're wanting something just a little bit bigger than a ball python, then you'll have the boa, which is a great one. Okay. And you can have something along like this. So. This is a juvenile subadult boa, and these get a little bit bigger, but it's not as big, unless you power feed them to get them this way, it's not as big as the Burmese and the Retics and some of your other species. So it gives you the ability to have a snake that's a little bit bigger than a ball python, a little bit thicker than a corn snake, because corn snakes are longer in some aspects, and in most aspects, corn snakes are a little bit longer than your ball pythons, but it gives the ability, it gives the ability to have something that's a little bit bigger uh, thicker than a ball python, but also a little bit longer than a corn snake. Come here, nosy. Now, one of the great things about boas is they're a good mix between a colubrid and a ball python. So they do have some activity level, so you'll be able to enjoy working with them, and they don't just sit still all the time, but they will be relaxed, and they will sit still quite often. Now, one of the key things to remember about boa constrictors, boas and retics do have a tendency. It doesn't always happen, okay? But they do have a tendency, if they're not worked with on a regular basis, that they can revert back to a more wild nature, being a little bit more defensive, okay? We don't say it as aggressive, they're just defensive. Maintaining your handling and maintaining good routines with a snake is a must. Whether you hook training, whether you're tong training, not squeezing with tongs, but using it as a touching tool, uh, using a broom, using a whatever. I mean, whatever it is that you use to touch to let them know that what's coming in is not food, then you tend to do fairly well with boa constrictors. Now, boas, pound for pound, my personal and somewhat professional opinion in this is boas are probably one of the strongest snakes on the planet, pound for pound, for any other snake. The key reason to this is boas are a, are a arboreal snake, okay? And uh, they stay quite arboreal throughout most of their life, even as larger snakes. The key thing behind that and their strength level is being able to hang from a tree limb and catch something like a primate or a condor, some large mammal, primate, something like that, be able to grab it, kill it, squeeze it, eat it, all while still hanging from a tree branch. That's impressive. And when boas hit, they hit like sledgehammers. I mean, they just hit and they drive right through kind of concept. So they're very prey driven. So you have to be very mindful of that. They don't necessarily have to get into an S position. As a lot of people think that a snake is going to get into to swing, they can be straight out and come straight across and, and grab a hold of something. So you have to understand what you're working with. But these animals are absolutely amazing. One of the cool things about boas, and I'll tell you what, let's see if I can get her to Turn around here. There we go. All boas. 
There we go. Have a mustache. Doesn't matter male or female. Let me see that one right there. Let me see my little hypo. Let me let me hand this one back to you. There we go. And let's bring the little one up here. And there is a mustache. <laughs> now, boas are live birthers. So for folks that get into breeding, one of the benefits to that is you don't have to worry about incubation periods when it comes to eggs. Mom does everything. Boas usually come out pretty well ready to feed on about anything that's mammalian related that you can throw at them. Of course, rats. And I mean, some folks will do mice. Mice is not nutritional, but you could do rats. You could do gerbils, hamsters, things like that. And these guys usually start off taking food fairly well. Now, in the wild, they will eat other things. In the wild, of course, uh, lizards. The anaconda is a type of boa, and they will eat other snakes, too. So that is one thing to kind of be mindful of. And I have seen boas take out other snakes before. Usually it's in the case of underfed or very malnourished specimens, and they just take out whatever they can take out just because they're hungry. But the boa constrictor comes in many, many different color forms too. So like this one right here is a super hypo or a, a high-end hypo. You can have super hypos, you can have albino sun glows, moon glows, jungles, and many, many other different color morphs. So there's so many different ones that they come in that if you like a little color, then you have options for a little color. If you just like a great, beautiful, normal red tail boa, then they're out there as well. You have localities such as Nicaraguan and Suriname and Peruvian and Guyana and Hog Island and quite a few other localities. Colombia is included in that. And so you can also find true localities available from time to time, which also have a little bit of different variations of colors and or patterns. So when we're talking about boas as pets, there's so many different types of habitats that you can do from arboreal tanks to habitats like this, which is a terrestrial tank for this young boa. This is a 422. To, of course, things like this custom-built terrarium that houses this Nile monitor or this carpet python. All these different types of habitats can work really well for a boa. That's the great thing about a boa, is they can be in terrestrial habitats or they can be in arboreal habitats. Or you can do a little bit of both in this particular case. This is big enough, like for this Nile or for that carpet over there. These are big enough to be both for plenty of ground and plenty of air. This is Chad. We are here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center and store. I hope this has kind of helped answer the question just briefly on is a boa constrictor a good snake pet? You're absolutely right it is. Wonderful, wonderful little pets. Love these guys. Now, we hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure to write us in and let us know of other things that you want us to film about. Get in touch with us. Our information will be in the description below. You can also catch us on TikTok at Reptile Rangers, at the Instagram page, uh, Kernersville Reptile Zoo, at our Facebook page, Kernersville Reptile Zoo. And of course, you can visit us here. We also have the website at KernersvilleReptileZoo.com. If you're interested in pet supplies, things like that, we carry that as well. So feel free and get in touch with us anytime. Again, we appreciate you coming along. We'll either see you here at the zoo, or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.